What we wear says a lot about who we are. Fashion shapes business, culture, and our identity. It's also a 2.5 trillion industry, hey. The pandemic redefined the fashion industry with online retail being at the front line of change. Many large brands had to shift their game and incorporate new technologies and trends with the constant change the markets were facing. So how is fashion recalibrating after the pandemic to balance profit with purpose? And how can you stay positive in these difficult times? Well, on all that and more is Robin Kiziak, FP&A Manager at VF Corporation, the global apparel, footwear, and accessories company, best known for brands like Vans, Timberland, The North Face, and Dickies. Hello, Robin. Hi, Guy. This era's online fashion leader is a Chinese company called Xi'an, which launches three to 4,000 female apparel products every day and at very low prices, ranging from two to $30. It's estimated that this fashion startup is valued more than Zara and H&M combined. Everything now is just far more accessible with online fashion. But VF's prices don't necessarily go down, so how do you deal with these changing markets? We've had to deal with that through how we report things, how we work with the operation. Um, we've opened up a new DC here in the UK um, to deal with parts of that as well. And obviously, it was all planned before the pandemic, but the pandemic made it even more vital that we operate to full capacity as soon as possible. So it's working with the operation, understanding how they're doing things and how that impacts the finances of the company. So we're digging into things like productivities, now, what automation can we use to make things more efficient? In a recent interview with Forbes magazine, Cameron Bailey, EVP of Global Supply Chain at VF Corporation, said that COVID and the war in Eastern Europe did not have a significant impact on VF. He claims the strategy they used was committed to selling goods in the same regions they're manufactured in. But as we all well know, much of the world's fabric is produced in Asia. How do you relate to his point of view in this supply chain issue? Now, we have seen impacts in terms of the freight delays, um, especially on, on shipping. So we are seeing it, an impact from that point of view. We're seeing the goods come in when we were unexpected. So we're having to react to that. Um, and that, of course, then means that we need to use more resource to cope with the inbound freight coming in. Um, but in terms of as, an, as a whole, I think VF has coped very well because they have got that, that market dominance. So they have been able to to take in goods when when then when they're needed to, rather than having to wait in, at the back of the queue. That market dominance has helped them, you know, be near the front of the queue when it comes to shipping lanes and and the rest of it. Moving on to climate change, surging heat waves and the fire catastrophe hitting Europe claimed thousands of lives. McKenzie research shows that the fashion sector is responsible for more than four percent of total greenhouse emissions. What active approaches does VF take on this matter? And I think that there's, there's quite a few initiatives. You know, we're very conscious of the environment here, obviously, and that whole ESG agenda is, is at the top of our list. So I think, you now, for example, Timberland, they do have their Timberloop project, um, which makes we and a lot of brands uh, try to incorporate this circular economy so the goods get to the end of their practical life, they can come back into the stores, back into the supply chain, and they're reused, recycled, and, and put back into, back into circulation again. So it's trying to make that circular economy and joining the dots, you know, it's not gonna happen overnight. Now, Robin, you have an interesting approach to implementing humor and provide comedy relief for finance teams. You even dedicated an entire blog, nothing funny about finance. And your LinkedIn page is filled with humorous content, which I personally love. So why, or what was the reason you decided to, as you put it, create a festive finance environment? Perhaps you handled some stress or face depression yourself? Through the pandemic, we were working mainly remotely. Now, of course, in distribution centers, it was still open, but people who didn't have to be in the distribution, distribution centers weren't here. So, so it becomes a lonely existence in some ways because you know, I'm working as a, the only finance person on the site. So, you know, you get to this point where it's like, no one understands what I'm going through. Um, and I think, you know, a lot of what I did was lean on to my, my family support network. Um, so, you know, obviously my wife and my children, you know, take your mind off it, do something different. Um, but also, you know, I, naturally I, I enjoy humor. I enjoy laughing. Um, and that sort of is where 
nothing funny about finance came from that is you know if i found it funny i thought i'd post it on linkedin and see if other people found it funny in times like you talk about the pandemic the war inflation cost of living you now if, if you don't smile about it you're going to cry so it's sort of it's that using it as a, as a tool to, to just brighten your day a little bit because you know if you're lucky enough not to be directly impacted you know indirectly you're going to be impacted or know somebody that is as well so it's it's using that humor just to you know get through the day because you know it helps with stress you know it helps with motivation robin kiziak fpna manager at vf corporation thank you very much thank you